Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. Um, yeah, this will be some interesting video, I think. Because it's about a cartoonist, most people don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe uh, you've come around the name of Daniel uh, Gegel. Um, when you read uh, Northlanders, he did some art for that, but yeah. He's one of the guys who does uh, some serviceable art, maybe even, but is a fantastic artist if you let him do his stuff. Like uh, this book here uh, that recently came out, Van Gogh, about the painter. It's an almost silent comic. It's a German publisher. It's a German book, but it's an almost silent comic. And highly recommended to get this, even if you uh, don't understand in, uh, German. Um, so... I have to speak this about in length uh, later on because this was really my uh, the last drop, the last reason to do this video now. Yeah, Daniel Gigel is a Croatian artist. I first uh, discovered or have seen uh, some art by him in this uh, Swiss uh, comic magazine called Strapazin. So you can, this is from end of the 80s. So you can see uh, Daniel Gigel is actually with me, with my comic card for a very long time now. And this, I did a video, one of my earliest videos about this little comic here, um, illustrating a song by the Pixies and showcasing not only the very good musical taste of Daniel Gigel, but his very ambiguous, atmospheric uh, use of black and white. So, and yeah, speaking of the Northlanders, uh, this is maybe his yeah, most important or maybe well-known uh, contribution to the comicdom, even though I would argue not his best uh, stuff. Um, let's see. That's not him here. We have some of his stuff. This is the story called War 1260. He had three uh, chapters in this uh, collection, this collection here. Um, and Northlanders all in all is obviously highly recommended. Um, even though maybe you don't uh, get the beauty, the strange, uh, dark beauty of Daniel Gell's uh, art, not with this uh, series here, with these stories. There are some other creators that maybe are even a better match for the stories by Brian Wood. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm uh, I'm absolutely a fan of. Uh, Daniel Gigel's art, so I'm a bit biased by that. I don't know why each and every colorist always uses the, or seems to use this very dark color scheme on his art. So even when maybe the most famous of all colorists today, uh, Dave Stewart, uh, did the colors here for Luna Park, he tends to use very dark colors. Uh, they sort of fit the story. It's a very sad and depressing, dark story written by Kevin Baker for Daniel Gigel. Um, but I don't know. Uh, since <laughs> the, the stuff here is in black and white only, as you will see, I would say, hey, they should have uh, left the colors out totally and uh, we would be better off. Uh, Luna Park is very well written, a uh, bit old-fashioned uh, in the way it is told through caption boxes. Okay, this is not caption boxes, but when you flip through the story here, there are a lot of captions uh, telling us um, the story of Alik, and he came from Russia to, to America, but um, he was in Chechnya, uh, Chechnya uh, the soldier, so he had to... Uh, witness and had, was involved obviously in uh, things that he wants to, wants to forget and 
It's almost Vietnam all over, but some years later and by a Russian uh, soldier whose Vietnam is called Chechnya. However, you uh, pronounce this here. And so it's so sad because it the story uh, goes further into uh, the past of Russia down there in uh, to the 19th century and, and beyond even. Um, and its real theme is that oh, we humans always make the same mistakes all over and over again and betray each other. And not only in this big uh, political level or warfare and stuff, but on a very personal level as well. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely not something you uh, would I would recommend uh, if you want to have a light heart, uh, light hearted, quick read. Uh, it's very dark and yeah, political and uh, yeah, touching and wonderful, wonderful book. And I got it for half price or even less a uh, long time ago um, but <laughs> I'm I'm not often in the mood to read these depressing tales so uh, this I, I read this just recently but uh, I'm very glad that I have this book here a uh, very strange uh, series that I actually picked up for two reasons for one uh, Daniel Jell's art, um, and and what you and you can see here what I've done uh, for this series here. I printed out some kind of little <laughs> um, floppy slipcase uh, to collect the four issues here. Uh, this is what I do sometimes when I have too much time. So this was a four issue series one two three four uh around this character congo bill i have actually had no knowledge about this but i uh, looked up in wikipedia and it uh, told me that this is a character that uh, appeared somewhere in action comics as a uh, in the back uh, section as, as a backup feature uh, it's a giant ape that uh, is uh, shares the same personality with some white dude that came to Africa there. And I, I think it was originally a very pulpy uh, character, but uh, Scott Cunningham, who wrote the story, and of course Daniel Gegel here, um, they did a very dark again uh, story. Uh, about the soldiers coming to war-torn Africa um, to the former Zaire, uh, to be precise, now the, the Democratic Rep Republic of Congo, way back then when uh, Mabuto was... Uh, yeah, the war between uh, Mabuto and... Who followed uh, Mabuto? Kabila. And yeah, so it has a, pre a precise setting in in, uh, in the history of uh, this African country, which I really cherish. And uh, the the creature uh, Congo Bill and this monster didn't appear in person before the end of issue three or four, and up to that, it was really just a. a yeah, very gripping action packed tale and and even that here uh, fits the tone of the story because it's about yeah okay cliche the dark continent Africa or full of myths and you can't understand it really and there are powers at work and so on and so on so it can't escape uh, the usual cliches uh, you of often uh, con connect with Africa and uh, stories that are set there but nevertheless it's a 
It's a very interesting fine read. The covers by Richard Corbin are a bit misleading, uh, though even though I, I like them, of course. I mean, Richard Corbin is always great. But they um, they promise you some light-hearted, pulpy event, maybe. Uh, and the story by Daniel Jagel is a bit, let's say, deeper and, yeah, sadder. And sadness is somehow the red thread that connects these three books, all published by the same uh, tiny German publisher called Insektenhaus. Um, let's start with this one here, Rotkäppchen or uh, Little Red Riding Hood. This is actually a silent comic, so you, if you read French or English and uh, don't read German, no problem, because uh, you will understand the story here, which is a retelling of uh, Little Red Riding Hood. I guess uh, this fairy tale is well known all over the world, so really uh, nothing should hinder you of getting this stuff here. And yeah, right from the first page you may get what I uh, said about his art doesn't need coloring. Um, it's actually this one here is my least favorite of the three because it's just so short and uh, a bit foreseeable what happens but look for uh, look at this art here and we have our lit, uh, little girl here that uh, goes to the house of the grandmother supposedly grandmother and things evolve uh, as you know when you know of this fairy tale it has a, a certain spin in the end uh, that is quite unusual or unusual interpretation of the original text i don't want to give it away niemand außer dir nobody but you uh, published as well by in the publisher insektenhaus is not totally a silent comic um, it has some caption boxes here and there. Um, you have to know that the text here is a letter from the grave, from a dead soldier to his wife or girlfriend. And yeah, he tells her about war, but about both of them and the future that they will be together one one day and it's not so blunt as i um, summarized it now it really feels like a poem uh, like this comic here feels like a poem to me um but the art always uh, obviously has here the main stage as well um Feels very painted, even though uh, there were uh, uh, photos uh, used as refer points of reference. Says, but the loose way he paints over these um, templates is highly enjoyable, and the way he puts them to almost abstract patterns together to almost abstract patterns is is very nice and I, I can't get enough of this kind of stuff here I, I have to say again this uh, comic here is no silent comic really but I'd say that it would work um, without these caption boxes as well because you see what happens there uh, even though the words add some layer of atmosphere on top of it uh, but you see, there's this guy who paints this huge wall painting there, huge graffiti, if you will, until uh, the guys from the city department come with their industrial paint to erase and destroy the artwork here. And uh, somehow a metaphor for the inevitability, if this is a word, uh, the senselessness of human, human being, of, of the life of our main protagonist who tells all the stuff here in his last letter from the grave. Um, and in the end we see her 
uh, getting the the letter and yes there's some reasoning about life love art and all everything that matters in within these few pages here they are very touching and yeah and somehow a love letter to life from the grave <laughs> oh man <laughs> uh, that's uh, this book here as well i can't say actually what this book here means to me um, it's fantastic uh, right off the bat and it's for sure one of my top 10 books uh, this year this is a fantastic book uh, just the build a uh, huge oversized um, soon binding um, cloth spine and uh, everything for less than 25 euros i don't know how they managed to do so with a pretty low print run i believe um, so highly recommended to pick this up uh, as long as it is available uh, by insecten house uh, as you will see it's for the most part a silent comic uh, whether you need the text or not uh, you have to judge by yourself i will uh, talk about them later but first about the art of course which is fantastic um, i don't know if i can do justice to this book here i but at, at least i'll try um, and i would say if you're familiar with the most important beats of the van gogh history uh, history of his life you will understand what's going on here and uh but you will see this in a new way and i'm so glad that he <laughs> uh, stayed to his uh, or haven't changed his art style but uh, used his usual black and white uh, graphisms and and art um, to depict scenes uh, of the lives uh, of the life of vincent van gogh if you ever have read anything uh, about Van Gogh, you will know that he was a very religious man and uh, almost obsessed uh, with this kind of stuff. And this is summarized here in a very clever manner uh, with these wings of the windmill uh, in the Netherlands, we are of course. And uh, one of these wings, or however you call them, these blades, uh, is shaped like a Jesus Christ on a cross. I mean, this is really this book here is huge to me because I, I was really an, well, I still am an, a big art fan, and I went from early childhood on into museums and uh, had to see all these paintings by the big guys in person, and and Vincent van Gogh always was one of the big guys until the kitsch took over for me at least when you see reproductions of his sunflowers each and everywhere in the waiting room of uh, the dentist or somewhere else and um it's um there was some kind of inflation of, of uh, his um pictures of his paintings and the the true essence of uh, his pictures that is somehow sadness about but uh, somehow some kind of ex existentialist worldview the question uh, what it what it is what it's important in the world what's it, what is beauty what is um what is what I'm seeing? What is my place here? And uh, and all that lying <laughs> flat on on your back and looking at the sun. Uh, this comic here reminded me of so many stuff uh, that Vincent van Gogh's paintings once meant to me, and somehow. Uh, were lost through all this kitsch that had uh, that was made of them um, it was not vincent van gogh's fault his paintings are still uh, just fantastic fights with 
the world, the human condition, our um, yeah, our existence, and they're so important, they're so deep, and not mere decorations that you can put on your wall. And of course, you can do this as well. And uh, of course, there is this fantastic beauty to them. Um, and he didn't uh, try to adapt uh, Vincent van Gogh's uh, painting style, uh, these marks with the brush and, and the signature brush uh, strokes and so on, uh, with just a few exceptions uh, in the end. But then it's really impactful. So this comic here is a totally different beast of its own, but uh, really, um, yeah, it's it's a true homage to, to uh, Vincent van Gogh, his uh, thoughts and his worldview and what he tried to achieve up to the very last page here i mean wonderful book but now to the text in the book um, and so as you can judge for yourself if this book is worth picking up even if uh, you're not familiar with german or french these are excerpts from the letters of, uh, by Vincent to his brother Theo. Uh, you can read them online, of course, uh, everywhere, oh, not everywhere, but there's uh, a, a site on the net uh, uh, where you can read uh, these uh, letters here. And they're loosely connected to the different episodes in Vincent van Gogh's life. Um, like this uh, struggle he had with uh, Gauguin, of course, very famous, that led to that even more famous uh, incident with hurting his uh, ear or cutting his ear. Um, that wound up to be a, some kind of kitsch uh, as well, but uh, his is downward spiral into... Um, dark depression and uh, his suicide in the end is you can you can see it in these excerpts of the letters uh, in a nutshell uh, if you will but you really don't need to understand the letters to see what uh, is going on in the uh, these on these illustrated pages in on these comic pages uh, before and on the very end here, you have a double page with biographical dates. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the life of Vincent van Gogh, you will find everything uh, that is needed to, to really see uh, where Daniel Gell was coming from in, in drawing these pages here. So it's a double page. It's not bad to to uh, to understand uh, these uh, passages here, the, this text here. Again, if you're familiar with the life uh, of uh, Vincent van Gogh and have a bit of a knowledge about his biography, you don't actually need it. But some will, some would argue with that. I, I'm afraid. So, wonderful book. Uh, I said it before it's uh, it's mind-boggling what co some comics can do with you and I really I want to break into the next museum and uh, check out some paintings especially by Van Gogh we were divided a long time because of all that kitsch thanks for listening and watching goodbye